If you are sitting at home next to your radio, you're hearing the music faster than you are if you're in the hall. Listening for the secret, searching for the sound. This is the Sound Podcast with Ira Haberman. If you like the jam bands that rock hard but are indescribable in terms of one true sound, you're already well aware of Dopapod. Blending deep grooves with hard-hitting percussion, catchy licks, creative keyboard playing, wild song structure, and interesting lyrics, it doesn't matter what genre you fit them in, these guys are totally cool and really fascinating. Before we get to our chat with Eli and Rob, have a listen to Please Help from their upcoming fifth release, Mega Gem. It's all that and much more. Garden Street, there's such a truth, it's 30 
funky yet spunky, right? I recently chatted with Eli and Rob about their new album, tour plans, and a whole lot more. We started by talking about what it took to put Mega Jam and their fifth record together. Well, you know, it's always uh, you know, like records are always like a journey because it's it just it's you know just like such a long time to first of all like write everything and then and then record it and then mix it and then master it and then like put it all online and do the whole thing and so it feels like uh, you know like like we're having a baby and it's a big baby <laughs> and it feels feels good to put I, it out there I think it debatably takes even longer than it takes a person to have a baby like it takes definitely <laughs> longer than 9 months to finish from the time when you start writing the first song that's going to end up on the album to the time when the album comes out. It's like two or three years sometimes, you know? Was that the case for this record? I mean, are you guys, are you guys always writing new music? Are you thinking about writing new music? I mean, how does, take me through the process of, of putting together a record because obviously it's taken some time for this one. Take me through the process of, of writing this record and, and getting it all down to tape. Well, we, uh, we are, you know, one of, I guess like every band in this, you know, scene or non up. And so it's kind of, uh, it, we're always working on, on, on like new music that like we're trying out live and certain songs, like as soon as you play them, as soon as you play them live, it's just, you can feel it, you know, it's like good. And we kind of like, go through that process a lot with our songs. Like we try them out live and see how they go. And then if they go well, we keep playing them. And then they kind of grow, turn in, you know, and kind of turn into their own. And then eventually when we have enough music, then the past, well, this, uh, on this record, we actually went to this, like, uh, this barn up in, up in the mountains of Colorado and like we brought all of our own gear and set up like we have a sound console and all of our our own gear and our mics and cables and everything and just you know like did the live setup but in a barn recorded everything on our own so it was really cool just to be like it was just a, a week up in the mountains and it was a really really fun experience. It was in January too, and we were basically snowed in up there. It was it was like almost cabin fever status like. The snow is, we almost, remember, we had to leave early. We had to, like, change our flights because there was some crazy blizzards coming in. And we almost didn't make it out. We had to, like, call a friend who drove for two hours to pick us up, you know. It was, it was a little like, it was a little like the Overlook Hotel and The Shining. Like, we're, we were snowed in, you know. But in a good way. It made us a little bit manic, but in a way, in a way where we could come up with some really strange ideas and take as long as we needed to make them be good ideas, you know? Because some, sometimes an idea, like, it's, so, it's not a matter of a good or bad idea. It's just a matter of how long it takes to fine-tune it so that it's something you can actually use, you know? So we got, I felt like we had a lot of time to make all those weird things come to life, you know? There was nothing else to do. There was no phone service up there, you know? There wasn't really yeah. anybody around, so it was cool. Another thing we did which was cool is that we just had a, like, we did a lot of like improv today with, with just like some improv and some of the best stuff from, from the album, I think came from that. There's a song that it's called uh, Buster Brown named after uh, Rob's cat. Which is past my, rest in, rest in, rest in peace. It's actually my fiance's cat. He, he lived yeah. a, a health, a healthy 19 years, Siamese cat. So that's yeah. A, tribute to him <laughs> but it was just you know a jam that we were doing and uh just like one part from a the jam they're like this is sweet and so just having like you know we weren't in like the normal recording studio setting where like you're on the clock and like you know time is money like record hurry up it was way more just relaxed you're able to do you know cool stuff like that is it easier to improv because it's mostly instrument. It's all instrumental. Is it easier to improv that way than fit lyrics kind of into what you're doing? Well, there's, there's a bunch of lyrics on the album. We, we made a totally instrumental album and 
what, like five, six years maybe, Eli? Something I like that. I think he's just saying so, about that one song, Buster Brown. Yeah, yeah, just Buster oh, Brown. Oh, I see, right. I see. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, t- totally. Um, it's sort of a, I feel like it's a, a uh, push and pull because the more, if there are, like, if there is the possibility of lyrics in there, it's just more voices and more toys to play with to turn into this thing. But also the more musical voices, whether it's literally somebody's voice or another instrument, what have you, the more you have to work with, the more you got to worry, not worry, but like, it, think it's, about it, it's more difficult. It's yeah. It's more difficult to like synchronize all of them in a way that's, that's effective. Right. Um, when, when a couple of those voices aren't there anymore, then it's, you know, you don't you don't have to listen to so many things all at the same time and make sure they're all meshing together. You can kind of just go, and it'll probably sound good. Is that fair, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When when you're adding vocals, there's just like, I mean, you know, you know some people improvise amazing vocals, but I can't. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, it just kind of takes more time. <laughs> it takes it takes more time for me to like, you know, actually craft what I want it to be and then kind of practice it and like work on it. Yeah. The, the lyrical stuff is probably the most maybe calculated element, I think in any of our songs, like it's the, it's the, it's the least improvisational thing. Everything's kind of like, uh, we, everything's very calculated to make sure it works pretty well. We spend a lot of time to make sure the harmonies sound good and, the lyrical aspect of it too and phrasing how we trying to make sure we say vowels in ways that sync up well so it's like if someone says like if it's the word time and maybe Eli's saying time and I'm saying time you know what I mean <laughs> little things like that um so yeah that, that don't one, sing that, that. You know, <laughs> I don't say that's an old Greg Allman quote he used to like when he would write lyrics he would say like man they don't sing right which I always love that. Like it doesn't roll off the tongue well enough to sing it. Maybe there's too many syllables or something, or it's just awkward for your mouth to form those syllables or something. That's we, we usually, we usually, uh, one of us will usually say that at least once during a lyric writing session. I feel like. How much do you have to think about how these songs will come alive in a, in a live setting? Obviously for this record, you're sort of recording them in a live setting. You're not in a studio. So you, you sort of have uh, the time it takes to figure out the nuance for a live setting, but is that something that you're necessarily committed to after you put these tracks down for the record? Oh well, yeah. I just kind of feel like live, like I'll, what, I'm always sort of like, eh, we'll figure out how to pull it off live later, like whatever. I want to like see what we can make in the studio. Like we don't have to just be four guys. We could have six guitar players all of a sudden, at least on that recording. I mean, it's all probably me playing guitar, but I can overdub till the cows come home and get it to sound like a certain way rather than like, I don't want the restriction of being like, can I pull it off live? You know, um, I want to get as creative as we can. You know, I, I do see why some bands do that. Like, I remember reading an article about the Strokes when I was in high school, how they don't record anything that they can't play back exactly that way live. And I, I got super respect for that mentality, too, but... For us, it's just fun. We, I, mean, I feel like we can't help it. We get a little carried away and want to see how far we can take it. And you know, Eli, do you feel yeah. similarly? Yeah, I think that there's you know like a balance there because it is to be able to overdub and add all these parts. But I think a lot of the music that I have like enjoyed the most in my life is you know like really simple kind of stripped down stuff that yeah. it's just like things are like hard pan and it's just like a few minutes, but there's something about that. It's just like, you know, less is more, it cuts and stuff. But that being said, Real. I also went and yeah, we went and like overdubbed uh, a string quartet for this album. So we're, uh, that was just like, for me, I've been really into like, uh, into like ELO. And I was like, I, I want to try doing strings. So it was just kind of like, an, uh, it's fun. Like, and um, yeah, I don't know if we'll ever do that live, but we'll see. <laughs> but the other thing too is that all those songs we were playing live before we thought about strings or any of that stuff. So it works. It most right. likely works live before we even start to record it. I don't. There's not too many instances. There's some, but not many where 
we wrote it in the studio and then tried to play it live. There's a, there's a couple, but there's definitely more on the other side. And also, but yeah. we definitely, there's a, there, I try to definitely be very conscious of like I'm getting carried away or something to take a step back and listen to it objectively and ask myself if it sounds good, you know, <laughs> like rather than just, you know, like, well, I did all this crazy stuff and it took so much time. And, you know, like I, I put this crazy harmony in or something like that. Does it sound good? That's really all that matters. You know, you definitely, there's a point where you need to ask yourself that. Are you guys all doing that in a collaborative way when you're, when you're making the record that, you know, something may sound good to Eli, but doesn't sound good to Rob or vice versa or, or the other two guys in the band that, you know, you really have this collaborative kind of go at it. We, we always try to very uh, democratic thing with this band. If, if anybody feels like strongly that something should be a certain way, like I'm always down to like, at least see how about it after exploring it, everything too, with the band, like where we play and, well, just, you know, I, I just try to keep everything, you know, like a group, my um, a hive mind kind of where everybody yeah. is so that no one feels like their voices. Well, at this point, you kind of are a hive mind. I mean, you've been doing this together for a, a while now. Like, it's not like you don't know what each other's capable of or what where each other's potentially going to go in a song. I mean, you kind of are. I, I guess on the older stuff, it's easier, but even on the newer stuff you probably have a sense of, of how the song is going to come together. I, I mean, I, I, I like when it's fun when you don't totally have a sense of how it's going to come together, you know, like it's, it's, so it's not like a paint by numbers kind of thing. Uh, I also think after so many years, it's just more important for everybody to be happy than it is for the song to be how any one person thinks it should be, you know, mm. uh, like, like I'd rather, have enough compromise so that everybody gets a little bit of what they want in the song and then everybody's happy with it rather than have one person be thrilled and nobody else got a, got what they wanted, you know? Um, totally. It's just, it's, the older you get, it's just way more important, you know? Well, you guys are, are becoming veterans of the scene at this point. I mean, you know, there are, there are new bands that are, that are coming out and, and are, digging in on some of the things that you do and i'm sure you hear other bands too and that that want that keeps you fresh with with ideas and 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 things that you want to do and certainly the festival setting allows you to see a lot of these bands right totally I, there's yeah. definitely like younger newer bands in the scene that i'm like a fan of you know do you want to shout out any of them sure uh i really i mean aqueous are some of our best buds they've been around a while long they've actually they're younger than us, but they, I think they've been a band like two years longer than we've been a band. Um, and then that this new band, Munion, M-U-N-G-I-O-N. Yeah, they had they're their... They're great. Their guitar... Their rig stolen yeah, in Detroit. Yeah, all the gear stolen. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. They, we saw them the day after that happened. They drove all the way to from Detroit to upstate New York, and they were playing this festival right after we played. And they were... Man, I got to hand it to them. They were troopers, man. They were smiling and they borrowed Aqueous's gear and just like made the best of it, you know, like you fuck. <laughs> you know? I don't know if I'm allowed to, I don't know if I'm allowed to swear or not. Well, no, but sure. Why not? I don't know if I'd... Okay, cool. Shit. Damn. Well, <laughs> um... <laughs> uh, but yeah, I don't know if I'd be that positive. All my stuff got taken and they were, man, they were, they were champs, man. I got to hand it to them. But yeah, I love those two. Um, I think, I think there's, there, <laughs> there's like something about like, you know, like going through like traumatic stuff with a group that actually kind of lifts everybody up and you just know you're going to laugh about it someday together. <laughs> you know, basically all you can do is just get through it. Just stay yeah. positive. Oh, totally. Like just like doesn't yeah. help to be all, like bummed. Uh, how about you, Eli? Are there, are there bands that, that are you're digging on or, or, you know, are these the, the two up and comers that are sort of catching your ear these days? Yeah. I just really, uh, really love the scene that we're in, you know, all like, just like all the different bands that like we came up with, like Turquoise are like our brothers, you know, and Neil, our drummer, like used to be in the band and their drummer, Mikey, you know, like our drummer. And 
proud of those guys and super happy for them for everything that's going great for them now because they've been working super hard their uh you know success and everything and well eyes and uh is awesome yeah i kind of i almost feel like if if they're up and coming then we probably haven't heard of them yet maybe you know yeah uh it's it's a fine line though. So we're still pro, we're still up and coming compared to a yeah. lot of bands, you know. So some of the bands, the long that you journey to. bands. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. you're you yeah. you are legitimately what six or seven years into this journey at this point, and so, uh, you know, that's that's a long time for four guys to stick together or hang out together and make music together. Yeah. And my my Absolutely. first show with the band was. My first show with the band was 10 years ago this March, actually. So that, that was way before it started becoming like a touring thing or, you know, we, we, it was sort of just another band out of like four bands that we were all in, you know, but, but yeah, it's been a long time, man. It's crazy. You know, go from being a kid to being like an adult in this band, you know, <laughs> uh, the plan is to tour the shit out of this record and other songs, right? I mean, that's what the fall is all about for you guys. I mean, that's what life is pretty much all about. You take a break to record a new record and then you're, you're on the road. I don't know if there's that much organization to it. We, we wish we could be the band that records an album and then does a tour for that album and then doesn't tour again until another album comes out. That's not, it's not 1996 anymore. So that doesn't happen that much. Um, unless you're like Radiohead or something. Right, right. You're just on the road constantly. Yeah. a lot of the time, yeah, less so, less than we used to be, which is nice. Um, and you, know, you mentioned like that we're going to play other songs too. We we definitely don't like we we play whichever songs of our catalog we want. We don't really worry about that the new album's out. Maybe a little bit, but uh, but less so than other bands might, you know. Because the more the more tunes we have in rotation, the you know the whole sort of jam community wants different set lists every night or a different set list from the last time you were in that town. So that's, still, that's something we consider, but that also is something we consider less than we used to. We kind of, we'll just play what we feel like more than, it, you know, we can't play this song cause we played it the last time we were here. If we feel like playing it, we'll play it, you know? And you're still writing, you're still writing set lists down before you go on stage. I mean, you're not totally improving the entire set, right? Some, Recently, sometimes. we've been kind of winging it more. <laughs> we've just been like, and, and it's, we just like it's, it's write like a list fun. of songs. Yeah, we just like write yeah. like a list of songs that we feel like playing, and then we just go for it. Um, sometimes but sometimes, sometimes like the sometimes bigger shows. Sort of, we, yeah, or it's a festival where it's only like an hour set or something like that. It's definitely better to not waste yeah. time on stage debating what we want to play next. You know, <laughs> but I, I, man, I've been having way more fun just kind of like talking about what people maybe feel like playing and then getting up there and just playing, read the crowd, see what song feels right next. You know, it's, it's, I, I think we're all having more fun approaching it that way. You know, I used to spend like hours on the set list, like so nerdy <laughs> and, 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 and in retrospect, so unnecessary, <laughs> you know, um, because you're going to get up there and it's, you don't know what the crowd's going to be in the mood for until you get up there. So I used to like spend all this time writing a set list and I get all attached to it and get kind of mad if it changed at all. <laughs> that's, it's just totally stupid. You know, it, it just goes in the face of what that kind of music can be about. So anyways, it's just spontaneity, you know? So, yeah. Cool. Uh, any high, are you looking forward to any stops on this tour? I mean, uh, the New Year's run, obviously, back home in, in Rhode Island and, and Massachusetts is going to be awesome. But are there any other stops from now till uh, December that you're you're kind of psyched about? Places that you haven't played or places that you haven't been to back to in a while? Or I know we're, um, we're playing the National in Richmond. I'm excited for that one. Yeah, that's a good spot. We love that place. It's not anywhere that we like haven't been yet, but I'm just excited to be on the road with um, the Motec guys for a while just be able to hang out with them and like jam with them backstage and do like sit-ins and just, cause they're all really, really awesome musicians. So I'm just excited to soak up as, as much of that as I can. 
and uh it's 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 always fun to like do a tour with with another band because you just there's like uh you know a camaraderie yes yeah exactly and it's nice it's definitely developed it always, over the course of a tour yeah cool uh Good luck with the new record, guys, and good luck with the tour. Uh, we love your music, and, and we're so glad that there's a new record. And uh, can't wait to check you out on the road somewhere. It might be Buffalo, uh, but uh, which don't get too excited about Buffalo. Uh, just joking, Buffalo. It's okay. I, I'm from Rochester. I know. We I love know Buffalo. All about Buffalo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's my. That's my. Those are my people. Right. Well, we and, love playing Buffalo. Yeah, it's always great. And it's, uh, you know, it's Ganser's hometown, so it can't be that bad, right? Um, yeah, there you go. Uh, so have fun, guys. Have fun on the road. Good luck with the new record. Good luck with the tour. And uh, and we'll catch you real soon. Thanks a lot for taking the time. All right, thanks a lot. You got it. Thank you. Honesty from some great guys hustling and doing great things on the road and in the studio. We're big fans. Before we leave you, have a listen to Turn by Turn, another track from Mega Jam. Don't forget to check them out at dopapod.com for news about Megagem and their tour schedule. You definitely want to see them when they hit your town.
You've been listening to The Sound Podcast. Technical production by Adam Karsh and Andrea Ruse. Inspired by the Grateful Dead and you, their fans. Like us on Facebook. Subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. And find us at thesoundpodcast.com. 